Good day. Happy Memorial Day on May 26, 2019. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. Hope you're having a pleasant holiday weekend. How many here remember the Roaring Twenties? Probably none of us, I would guess, because any of us who were... Um, who are old enough now to have been alive in the 1920s would have had to have been in a single digit age then and would have only caught the very tail end of it, not the beginning. So um, while the Roaring Twenties were a 20th century phenomenon, none of us were there to observe it in real time, but we are here to observe the uh, and and live through in real time the roaring teens of the 21st century. We'll explain what we mean as we go along here. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at uh, the stock market of the 1920s. This is a 15-year chart from 1915 to 1930 showing the Dow Jones Industrial Average on a monthly basis. And as you see through the 20s, the stock market was rising, rising, rising up into a crescendo that peaked in August of, 2000, of 1929. Then we see a crash in late 1929 into towards the end of the year. Then we see a bear market rally into early 1930. We know that this was a primary bear market uh, very simply by taking a look at the monthly MACD, which was in fact in decline by December of 1929. Actually, by November of 1929, it was in a decline, indicating um, a primary bear market in hand. And also the 13 month moving average of the New York Stock Exchange, or then the Dow Jones Industrial Average, was declining. And when the 13-month moving average is declining, that's the very definition of a primary bear market. Likewise, if we take a look now at this 21st century phenomenon, which we choose to call the Roaring Teens of the 21st century, uh, we see the same general pattern. The market is moving up, 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 up through the teens into a crescendo that reached its peak in January of 2018. And then the market came down hard in uh, the winter. Uh, in early 2018, advanced again into the September-October period when the Standard & Poor's 500 made a new high. But we see here that the New York Stock Exchange composite failed to make a new high. The broader list of stocks was not participating. Then the market crashed down in late 19, 2019, 2018, I'm sorry, I'll get these dates right. And then we had a bear market rally going in early 2019 up into uh, just the last few weeks. And as it rallied up, the Standard & Poor's 500 again made an all-time high in 2019 in April, but the standard, the New York Stock Exchange composite failed to confirm that. Two lower lows in the New York Stock Exchange composite after that January of 2018 peak, and those lower lows came in the face of higher S&P readings. There is yet another indication of a primary bear market, but the uh, strongest indications of primary bear market are the fact that the MACD monthly was in decline, is in decline, starting with early 2018. The 13-month moving average of the New York Stock Exchange composite is declining. The very uh, earmark of a primary bear market, and we see it in many other indicators like the CCI that I love to use, which came down below zero, confirming a primary bear market. So here we have 
the Roaring Twenty peak in 29, and then the beginning of a bear market, a primary bear market that led us into the Great Depression. Here we have the Roaring Teens coming up to a peak in 2018, and then the beginning of a primary bear market that I believe will be the biggest bear market of our lifetime. And we're living through it now. We're taking advantage of it now. And this is the biggest trading opportunity that I've personally had in uh, my time on this planet. And I submit to you that it is your biggest opportunity as well. So as we come down and take a look at where we are, you can see that uh, on this chart, again, 1930, here is the market going into the peak in August of 1929. Here's that crash in uh, uh, that started the bear market in late 1929 into November. Here is the bear market rally going into 1930, which peaked in April. Notice that the summation index, McClellan summation index, led this advance up. But then there came a point where the summation index started coming down. Summation index is a measure of advanced declines. It's a measure of market momentum. We're not going to go into the arithmetic construction of that index right now, other than to say that it leads the market. Summation index was moving down um, in the spring of 1930. As the Dow kept going up, there finally reached a peak where what we call the flashpoint was reached, where the summation index had come down, made a new low, had a little bounce up, and then came down and made another new low and crashed through the earlier low. That's the flashpoint. Once we crossed through there, all hell broke loose. The market started falling apart. And we'll show you after a while what followed that you already know but we'll show you in graphic form so you can see how dramatic it was um, now let's look at the current time right now in 2019 here is the peak in October of 2019 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average here is that decline into late uh, 2018. I hope I said that right. If I missed a date, uh, you'll you'll forgive me. I, I hope I'm going through a lot of information really quickly here. But we came down and made a low on December 24th, 2018, and then began the bear market rally into the early months of uh, 2019, mirroring what occurred 89 years. Uh, earlier, Fibonacci number 89 years earlier in 1930 as the summation index led that market up then started going down and the market continued going higher but when the summation index reached its flash point and broke boom here comes the market down and if you don't think that that's a big deal, look what happened in 1930 when we broke that flash point. That was right here. Here is where we crossed below the flash point, right here. Boom, boom. And now <laughs> the, the market, bear market, market moves into high gear. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped from <clears throat> nearly 400 in 1929 at its peak to around 40 in 1932 at its bottom. A 90% drop. Are we going to have a 90% drop here? Probably not. We don't think so. But it's going to be a big one, folks. Make no mistake about that. Perhaps the biggest of your lifetime and mine. Um, we may not have an opportunity again like this in the time that we have to spend on this planet. So let's take advantage of this one. It is the big one, folks. And so there we are. We've broken through the flashpoint. This is what is ahead of us in form, not magnitude, but in form. That's what we're going through right now. Um, so again, 1930, we come down uh, when the summation index reaches a flash point and grows below it. 
down comes the market 19 2019 the market comes up uh, reaches its flash point you've already seen and and is moving down here's what followed again in 1930 once it did break the flash point a drop that took the Dow to just 10 percent of its original 1929 peak value um, so now what well, here's a, here's a chart right through Friday's close. You can see the pattern of the market as we as we broke that flash point back on, in early May, uh, just about three weeks ago, two and a half, three weeks ago, and we're coming down now uh, into the next phase. We are in that decline. We're in it now. It's going on. It's uh, not going to wait for anybody. Uh, no matter how much they want it to, it's happening now, folks. Um, and that's the daily chart. You can see the last couple of days here. Here is a two-hour chart. You can see it in, in both cases, you can see this pennant formation or symmetrical triangle formation where it consolidated and then broke to the downside. You can see it better on this two-hour chart. This two-hour chart is one of the charts that we use that comprises our seven sentinel trend measures. Um, we post everything that we do and everything that's going on and the ongoing tracking of the market on seven sentinels all day, every day, every night, every weekend. And our trades are there too in real time. Now, uh, how do we make trades? We do not make trades based on anything that we're saying to today about what my opinion is or anybody else's opinion is about what the market's going to do over the balance of 2019 or 2020 or 2021. We all have opinions, but we don't trade on opinions ever. We trade only on the trend measures that are given to us by our seven sentinel trend measures. We track uh, seven market indicators in um, six different time frames from monthly down to three minute charts, and we use those to time our trades. The most important of those is the LOLR, the line of least resistance sentinels, which are the two hour uh, charts, and they tell us whether we need to be long or short. Right now, they tell us unmistakably we need to be short the market. We are short the market. How much of a position we take depends on what our other indicators say in conjunction with the LOLR, but we trade on and only on our trend indicators. This weekend, um, in recognition of uh, the Memorial Day holiday, we are offering a special offering to uh, new subscribers uh, of just $9.95 for the first 21 days. It's under 10 bucks, folks, to see if we know what we're talking about. We do, but you need to see that for yourself. And for $9.95, you can do that. You can read our nightly, daily, weekend uh, reports and, and see how we track our trades with the Seven Sentinels. Uh, we hope you'll join us. Come by. But if you just go to the Seven Sentinels website and take a look, you're going to see a lot of articles here uh, like Meet the New Boss, Same as the Old Boss, When Worlds Collide, Red Sky in the Morning, Rainmaker. Those are four articles that I heartily, uh, heartily uh, uh, endorse or uh, recommend that you read because they talked through 2017 and 2018 about how that period of time marked a top that will stand uh, for decades as a quintessential stock market top. If you go to limited time trial, click on that for $9.95. You can have our offering. We hope that you will. We want to thank you for coming by and listening today, folks, and happy Memorial Day weekend and good trading in the days ahead.